Thank you for the opportunity to be here. And more importantly, thank you for being here and listening to me and what my senior project was about. So I came to COA after graduating from the United World College of the Atlantic in Wales. So I came from Atlantic College to College of the Atlantic. <laughs> and then I spent my gap year in the United World College of Agriculture, Simon Bolivar in Venezuela. I focused the past four years of my study here mostly on economics and sustainable agriculture. And I did my internship at the Slovak Ministry of the Environment. And when I went home in my second year, I realized that I had a deeper connection to my own country than, than I really realized over the past few years of traveling. So in a true human ecological manner, I decided to combine all my interests and all my personal passions into my senior project. And I did a qualitative community-based research project in Bratislava that focused on agricultural transformation and the recent emergence of urban farms, mostly in the capital city, Bratislava. I found the timing of my senior project really extraordinary. And why? It has been 25 years since the fall of the communist regime in the in the Soviet bloc, in the former Soviet bloc, and in Slovakia. And so I was wondering how all this affected agricultural transformation. What's more, the country just reached its maturity, celebrating its 21st birthday this year. And so I can say I'm older than my country, which is pretty cool. And it has also been uh, 10 years since our membership in the European Union. So. Once again, my question was how these, how these profound changes affected agriculture and tra agricultural transformation. And I was looking for answers uh, through a really diverse and beautiful group of people. I talked, to, I talked to people who dedicated their whole life to farming, who were cooperative uh, agricultural cooperative leaders and state farm managers. But I also talked to two former ministers of agriculture who were right there at the center stage of uh, creating all the policy changes. I talked to community organizers and businessmen who started doing new businesses after the new neoliberal economic uh, system. But I also talked to local food activists and I did a survey that was, um, that was trying to figure out what the attitudes of my generation so the post-revolution generation now towards agriculture. And uh, what I found was pretty extraordinary. Uh, from a country that had a predominantly agrarian tradition, um, and from a country that had certain pride in having this strong focus on agriculture, uh, we got to a point where agriculture is one of the mostly underappreciated sectors. From what I found from my survey, almost no one <laughs> in my generation has any connection to land. And answering my question whether they would ever want to be employed in the agricultural sector, they said, well, maybe if I was a manager or if I was managing a corporation. So that's clearly, it's clearly not um, any passion. And all my family is trying to also discourage me to, to go into this, this direction. Hi, mom. <laughs> um, and um, so what now? Um, I found this whole discouragement with agriculture really paradoxical, especially now when the emergence of health food revolution is really great and the interest in organic foods is higher than ever and there is a huge demand for it. But organic produce and food is just the last step of the production chain and we need to think of all the other processes that are involved in getting that food to our table. So I was, I was trying to figure out a way or find a platform in which uh, I could ag uh, educate my peers about our agricultural past and about the importance of the entire food systems, not just the end part. So given the emergence of the urban agricultural movement, um, I came across and became part of a really wonderful, motivated group of young professionals who were utilizing unused urban space to reclaim it and to basically build community around abandoned spaces. So we um, found this unused roof in the center of Bratislava, the capital of Slovakia, and we designed a project that would transform it into a community center that would be built around, around gardening and around uh, presentations and movie screening, etc. So, but organizing a project like this is 
No, it's very easy. <laughs> it's more challenging than I could ever have imagined. So what we did, that we identified supporters of this idea, supporters in Bratislava, and um, amongst these, these are um, various uh, organizations that said that uh, in the event of success of our project, they would support us ideologically, they would make programs in our rooftop, they would uh, help with the publicity. So these are all ideological supporters and they are not providing any monetary means. Amongst them we have, for example, the Slovak National Gallery, different bars and wonderful restaurants, and for example, design weeks and so on. And so once again, looking at this unused rooftop space, we created this vision of a lively and beautiful new space. And thankfully, having wonderful uh, COA friends, uh, two friends, two very best friends of mine, Zuri de Souza and Anna Puhach, who are graduating with me, we designed and applied for a Davis Project for Peace, which we got award, uh, awarded this summer. So thanks to that award, we will have at least some small means to start building this project. And our friends in Bratislava have been active as well, and uh, we, we received permission to create a summer camp um, involving uh, high school, four different high, uh, high school students from four different schools who would come up to the roof and garden with us and learn about our past. Yeah, and I would like to thank everyone who was involved. There is an incredible amount of people, and thank you everyone for making this possible and for allowing me to finally go and walk my talk. Thank you.